Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Minister, Thank dear you. Commissioner. Thank you very much for this opening. And after the very fruitful morning, we are now going into the awarding ceremony of the Digital Education Hackathon. My name is Georgi Dimitrov, and I will be guiding you through this ceremony in the next 35 minutes. I am the head of unit for digital education in the European Commission, in the Directorate General for Education, Youth, Sport and Culture. First of all, many thanks to the Minister and the Portuguese Presidency for hosting this ceremony in the framework of this high-level event on digital education. The Hackathon is a flagship initiative of the Digital Education Action Plan, which the Minister kindly mentioned. And we are extremely pleased by the results we have achieved in the second edition. And remember, this was achieved in very extraordinary circumstances. In 2020, we organized the hackathon in the middle of the COVID crisis, together with the German presidency of the council. Very concretely, on the 12th and 13th of November, 2020, we had around 2,600 people around the world, as you will see, who virtually joined to discuss the future of digital education and to work on solutions. This was possible only because there was excellent cooperation of many different organizations. This is why I cannot open this ceremony without warmly thanking the EIT Climate Kick, the Auto University for the excellent coordination, the German presidency of the council, as well as the Hochschule Forum on digitization and the German Academic Exchange Service for the high-level event they organized last autumn. Today, we are to celebrate the winners. And I'm honored uh, to be able here in the presence of the minister, in the presence of the European Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Youth, Ms. Maria Gabriel, in the presence of other high-level stakeholder, high stakeholders to Welcome the winning teams. Dear DGEDU hack teams, first of all, I would like to invite the European Commissioner, Ms. Gabriel, to share a few words with you. Commissioner, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Minister, dear Tiago, dear Digital Education Hackathon winners, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, it is a great pleasure to be here today at this Portuguese Presidency high-level event and to open the Digital Education Hackathon awarding ceremony to engage, to care, to foster. This title really strikes the right tone on what we are trying to achieve. These are our primary goals as we shape today's and tomorrow's society through digital education. And this is especially true as we continue to tackle the pandemic. In the last 16 months, we have made huge efforts, especially in digital education, to make sure all our learners remained engaged, connected and cared for, fostering their creativity and making sure they have all they need to succeed. This was not easy, yet it also presented us with an opportunity, an opportunity to innovate, to work together and join forces, finding solutions for a better future. And this crisis has acted as a catalyst towards a transformation we knew was coming, but didn't know would come so quickly. For over a year, we have worked on rethinking our education and training, ensuring that our learners are equipped with the skills and competencies they need for the digital age. And this has been a European effort. As each member state found solutions to the challenges ahead of us, we shared that knowledge and learned from each other. And I'm proud of what we have achieved together. Digital education has never been higher on the European agenda. The leaders of our member states made it very clear in the Porto Social Summit declaration earlier this month. Education and skills for the digital and green transition are at the center of our political action. In fact, digital skills connect so many of our ambitions from the pillar of social rights action plan to our vision for the digital decade, pointing towards universal digital education as one of the possible digital principles. Of course, our goals for digital education 
are bound to all the work we have already done on the Digital Education Action Plan. Currently in full swing, the Action Plan puts forward an ambitious and comprehensive vision for digital education in Europe, focusing on high quality, inclusion, and accessibility for all. And on the one hand, we are developing a high-performing digital education ecosystem. On the other, we are boosting digital skills and competencies for the digital transformation. Key to all of this, of course, are the efforts of so many practitioners at grassroots level. They pick up on the needs of learners and transform user-generated ideas into practical solutions. And this is precisely the focus of our Digital Education Hackathon, a flagship initiative of the Digital Education Action Plan. With its truly grassroots nature, the Hackathon works along these lines, encouraging teams from around the globe, Georgi, you just tell us, that will join forces and solve a challenge for education and training in the digital age. And through the Hackathon, we can make sure each of these solutions our participants come up with reaches the broadest possible audience. These are solutions developed in a local context, born out of specific challenges and experiences. And I really believe that this was a fundamental ingredient for the success of this second edition. 55 events took place in 33 countries across the globe. In Europe, events spread from Romania to Finland to Portugal, but that was not all. We also had local events in 14 non-European countries, Canada, Peru, Nigeria, or Sri, Sri Lanka, just to name a few. And the hackathon brought together, yes, that was already said, 2,600 people from a variety of backgrounds, schools, universities, NGOs, research labs, innovation centers, startups, even ministries of education. And the diversity and the quality of the solutions was impressive, and so was the competition. And out of all local events, our dedicated group of experts selected 12 solutions as finalists of the Digital Education Hackathon Global Award. You all had your say online, and the three solutions we have here were voted as the Digital Education Hackathon winners for 2020, each team receiving 5,000 euro to put their solution to work. I must say it is great what we have achieved together with the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, EIT Climate Kick, and Aalto University in Finland. Let me also thank Mitu, the German presidency of the European Union, for having hosted the main stage event of the second edition of this hackathon last November. And following this tradition, we now have the honor to be hosted by the Portuguese presidency for this awarding ceremony. And of course, let me congratulate the three Digital Education Hackathon Global Solutions and the teams which have joined us today. Squiddy, created by Team Provolosi from Italy, which participated in a hackathon organized by Trento University. Save Your Dopamine, developed by Team Save Dopamine. This team showed very clearly the potential digital technologies hold for bringing people together as the team members come from Romania, Germany, and Peru, participating in a hackathon that was hosted by the Polytechnic of Porto, Portugal, and Sex Edu, a solution created by Team Believe. This team show us the truly global nature of the hackathon, having taken part from Peru in a digital education hackathon hosted by the Peruvian University of Applied Sciences. So now I'm really curious to learn more about the solutions of the three winning teams and I'm looking forward to their pitches. Thank you. Many thanks, Commissioner. It will take just one minute to go through those pitches. We have to uh, mention the rules of the game, of course. Um, so we're going to go through the three pitches and the rules of the game are very simple. We have three minutes per team. We have one team member per team that is going to present, and we have a, a third rule, which is no slides. So, do you think we are ready? 
I think we are ready and we can go to the first solution, which I would like to invite to the stage, which is Squiddy by Provolosi. The team is made by four students that participated at the hackathon uh, at the University of Trento, Sebastiano Castellan, Simone De Giacomi, Sergio Facini, Lorenzo Framba. I hope I got that right. Prevalosi will be pitched by Sebastiano. Sebastiano, you have three minutes. The floor is yours. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you all. We are Prevalosi from the University of Trento, Italy. So we are first students. And during the pandemic, all of our lessons were held online and all practical activities, including laboratories, were no longer possible. Applying our knowledge is practical in a practical way is the best way to understand the concept of learning class. However, the online platform currently in use make class on one directional and tedious to follow. Students can apply what they are learning during classes and that leads to a loss of attention and interest. Our solution is a platform that put collaboration between students at the center. We are developing Squiddy, a collaboration platform for any kind of laboratory simulator. It's a tool that uh, recreating an experience that is very similar to what's happening in real labs. It's like having students working together again. In Squiddy, a group of students collaborate in real time through a video call and a share screen. The tool can be used for any kind of lab, physics, chemistry, engineering, electronics, and so on. For example, let's suppose we are dealing with a physics simulator. Squiddy allows each student to click on screen, grab a tool, move a mass, change a variable. It's uh, as if we were conducting an experience in real life, along with my classmates during this action and our sync with the students on my group. We are in the same uh, instance with the simulator and we, we can discuss our finding in real time via the video call. Squiddy give, uh, give each student the same opportunity to learn practical skills as if you were before Corona. We are made pro uh, we've made a prototype of Squid and now we are collaborating with the University of Trento for developing Squid for real. Thanks for your attention, this is Squiddy. For any information about the project, feel free to contact us. Thank you very much, Sebastiano, for this excellent presentation. And indeed, uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education has a very important role. And I'm very glad that you are thinking about this and how to make it more effective online. Now we are going to go to the second solution. And for this, I would like to invite to the stage Safe Dopamine by Save Your Dopamine. This team is made by three team members from three different countries and they participated in a hackathon hosted by the Institute of Engineering of Porto Polytechnic. So it's a little bit of a home run here today. The team is Felix Rayman, Margareta Shego, and Luciano Zickler. Save Dopamine will be pitched today by Luciano. Luciano, you have three minutes. The floor is yours. Hello, Georgi. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, okay. Let's go. So today I will present to you our idea, Safe Dopamine, which deals with the future of work. Um, as you may know, 84% of companies are transitioning into new technology and half of them are automating tasks. Uh, adoption of new technology and specialization of knowledge is leading to skill shortages and companies are resp responsible for re and upskilling their workforce in order to adapt to the future. Uh, additionally, the transition from static to project-based work makes it increasingly harder to find the right, right person for the job. Um, the skill set requirements are increasingly demanding for specialized knowledge and the opportunities to gain specialized expertise are not always available. Uh, for these reasons, some, sadly many, are left behind despite having the potential to excel given the proper work environment. Our vision is to help complex organizations, communities evolve, building a strong and democratic workforce. Our artificial intelligence recommends adequate skill profiles to the right projects and helps to connect employees, freelancers, and tasks with each other. We want people to actively involve themselves in their network. Active community members gain reward points that can be used for their personalized continuous learning experience on their learning paths. This keeps employees motivated. Think of Netflix just better. Find the best fitting projects inside of your organization and get rewarded for shaping the future. Safe Dopamine is constantly growing. Our team has a multidisciplinary background in AI, 
app development and business management. Together with the ISEP Porto, we strive to create a collaborative space where research and product application evolve together. Winning the DigiEduHack marks the beginning of our next phase, programming and testing our prototype. In the next phases, we will be validating our business model in the market and through research. In the context of a post-pandemic technology-driven labor market, we think society has to change the way it treats work. Safe dopamine will democratize work and career development. In Europe alone, we estimate that 38 million employee experiences could positively be impacted by us. At this point, we are calling for data scientists and motivated people to join us in our quest to revolutionize the future of work. Together, we'll bring safe dopamine to life. Thank you. Uh, at this point, I just want to say also very quickly that we are very honored for all the support received during this hackathon and thank our supporters very much. Many thanks, Luciano. The ambition is certainly very, very clear. And um, it is also clear that you are looking into the opportunities of artificial intelligence, which is, is great. So now we are coming to the third solution, which is EduSex by Believe. Good morning, Peru. First of all, this team comes from Lima and participated in a hackathon hosted by Universidad Peruana de Ciencias Aplicadas in Peru. Excuse me if I didn't get that perfectly right. The members are Lucia Correa, Sergio Farfan, Nidia Quintana, Carla Rojas, and Carlos Rojas. The team will be represented today for the pitching by Carla Rojas. Carla, you have three minutes. Please, the floor is yours. Good afternoon and good morning to everyone. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And I want to start by asking you, do you know what comprehensive sex education means? Why is it important? Comprehensive sex education, CSC from now on, is a taboo all around the world and even more in South America. Most people think it is about sex, but CSC goes beyond the reproductive. It contributes the development of identity, affectivity, expressiveness, and provides abilities for life and knowledge about their bodies, health, and emotions. According to the UN, two out of three girls in some countries have no idea of what menstruation means. Every year, two million children are born from teenagers of 15 to 19 years old, and the cases of girls under 15 years old are increasing. By now, you could be asking yourself, if CSC is so important, how is it possible that young people do not receive sex education? And that's why we created a solution to contribute in the education of children and teenagers, EduSex. The goal is to educate through playing. It is a decision-making game of daily life adventures related to CSC that changes the scenarios of the game according to the age of the players and the geographic regions where they live. The target of the game is to educate users about all the topics covered by CSE, guiding them in their psychological and physical development. However, the users will not realize that they are learning. Despite the educational part, we give equal importance to gamification as it is fundamental to engage the users. We rely on experts such as psychologists, sexologists, and educators as part of the content development team. We designed a game that changes users to be the narrators of their own adventures. CSE plays a crucial role in addressing the health and well-being of children and young people. It provides an opportunity to present sexuality with a positive approach, emphasizing values such as respect, inclusion, non-discrimination, equality, empathy, responsibility, and reciprocity. Our society needs comprehensive sex education. So, are you in? Thank you so much. Thank you very much as well, Carla, from my side. And this is also clear uh, for the potential of a so solution around serious games, which is also an emerging trend in digital education. I would like now to invite our high-level speakers to say a few words on the solutions each team presented during the session. And I would like to start with Commissioner Gabriel. Commissioner. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, dear Sebastiano, Luciano and Carla. That's really impressive. Thank you very much for your excellent pitches. And I'd like to say congratulations to you and all the teams behind, because we know that it's a teamwork. I must say that I'm really impressed by the quality and innovative nature of these three solutions. Congratulations again uh, to the three outstanding teams. But I would like to say that, yes, it is really inspiring to see the enthusiasm and the passion of young people from such a variety of backgrounds coming together to solve challenges in digital education. Sebastiano and the team Squiddy. Squiddy tackles one of the most fundamental challenges of the pandemic, the development of practical skills for remote and distance learning. We all know that that was a huge problem faced by so many students in the last months. So I think that Squiddy's virtual environment is a fantastic solution. Luciano, save your dopamine. We know that this, proje this project focuses on another very pertinent topic the importance of addressing skills gaps as well as upskilling and reskilling and targeting the workplace. This platform helps match employee skills and projects through artificial intelligence, also integrating the concept of intercompany marketplace and points gaining for good performance. I found this a great way to build innovation, to build motivation, but also to learn from each other, supporting our colleagues in the workplace. Carla, what's an inspiring uh, speech. Well, I'd like really to congratulate all the entire team behind the Sex Educate Edu Solution, which show us how sexual education can be presented in an accessible way through digital technologies. Your creativity, considering different scenarios and teaching sexual education through games, it's truly impressive. I find it fascinating how you have managed to adapt content to different age groups so well. So dear teams, with your creativity, hard work and vision, you have earned your place as winners. I count on your help and support in the next edition of the Hackathon as the announcement is here, Digital Education Hackathon Ambassadors for 2021. Congratulations again, and thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner, for this uh, great, great, great words. Um, I think that uh, the Minister of um, Portugal for Education, Mr. Rodriguez, uh, might also want to share a few words on the solutions presented. Minister. Hello, trying to be quick. What a fantastic set of pitches. And it is easy to understand the reason you are the winners. So I would like to start by analyzing very briefly Squiddy, Simone, Lorenzo, Sergio and Sebastiano. Congratulazione. Uh, what a right time to come up with uh, Squiddy. And Squiddy provides an innovative response to a fundamental issue that concerned us greatly during all the lockdowns due to the pandemic. How to keep, how to maintain practical lessons and uh, lab experiments. I'm myself a scientist and I know how essential it is to learn uh, to work in a lab and uh, how practical lessons are so important. Developing an uh, online collaboration platform for teachers and students to share and build virtual labs through simulators is indeed to be applauded. And I would like to, to tell you congratulations again. And uh, it, it's, it's fantastic that you are one of the winners and that uh, your work is going to have more visibility. Uh, the second one, well, the third one, Sex Edu. Uh, let me first of all congratulate uh, Lucia, Sergio, Nidia, Carla, and Carlos. Enhorabuena y un saludo para Peru for your project and, of course, the victory. Education for citizenship is, must be at the heart of uh, our priorities. And it is at the heart of my priorities for the development of the needed skills youngsters need to manage their personal life and future work life. Without this kind of education, it's much uh, more difficult to build uh, coherent and cohesive societies. And we need tools like the ones that you have 
to uh, uh, teach comprehensive sex education because it is definitely an important dimension of our citizenship and a topic that needs to be addressed since uh, young ages. And finally, uh, the last but not the least, save dopamine, uh, Luciano, Felix uh, e Margareta uh, from uh, Porto. Muitos parabéns, muito orgulho também em ter uma equipa portuguesa. Congratulations, and we're so proud to have a Portuguese team. And, uh, for the Portuguese Minister of Education, congratulating a Portuguese team from Porto is also very special. Very special. And the SDG 4 aims to ensure, as we know, inclusive and equitable quality education and also promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. And when we speak about reskilling and when we speak about upskilling, are at the center of the debates on how our current workforce should respond to the digital and the green transitions. And um, I'm sure that the marketplace integrated into Save Dopamine will prove to be a useful tool to reach the goal of stimulating reskilling and upskilling, but more importantly, it will contribute to bring closer together the different resources of the organizations in a true spirit of collaboration, shared values, and horizontally. Congratulations once again to the Portuguese team, but I want to congratulate all the teams. The ones from, uh, uh, of course, from Italy, from Peru, from Portugal. But if you allow me, I want to congratulate all the teams because we have winners, because we have a significant number of people involved and uh, a significant number of participants. And congratulations to all of you that participated in this impressive hackathon. Obrigado, Minister Rodriguez. And before we move to closing the awarding ceremony, I would like to invite the Commissioner to share with us some news about the next edition of the Digital Education Hackathon, because as you know, the end of something is the beginning of something else. And I'm sure you might be interested to know more about what's happening. So Commissioner, would you tell us something about the next hackathon? A great pleasure, dear friends, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it is also my honor to, to announce today the date for the third edition of the Hackathon uh, this year. The Hackathon will take place on 9th and 10th of November. And the main stage event will be kindly hosted by the Slovenian Presidency of the Council of the EU in cooperation with the International Research Center on Artificial Intelligence under the auspices of UNESCO. This year's edition will focus on sustainable digital education. This will help us link the hackathon to the Digital Education Hub, the facility that will set up to foster cross-sectoral collaboration on digital education across Europe. And as of tomorrow, we'll open the registration for hosting organization in the, the hackathon. We hope to see the same level of interest, higher level of interest, not the same quality and participation in the next year's edition. And I know that the Minister of Education, Science and Sport of Slovenia, Simona Kustec, is with us today. I'm sure she would like to say a few words on their commitment and the engagement and taking again the current and upcoming presidency for their support to the Digital Education Hackathon, I would like to encourage you to promote this initiative in your countries so we can have an even bigger and more successful Digital Education Hackathon in 2021. Thank you so much. Many thanks, Commissioner. You see true uh, cooperation among the presidencies here. Uh, well, uh, Minister Kustets, uh, your name has been mentioned. Without further ado, please tell us why Slovenia has decided to host the next edition of the Hackathon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Dobar dan from Ljubljana, from Slovenia. It's raining here, but uh, very warm and sunny in our hearts, especially thinking about uh, our future work. So I would first of all like to thank uh, your minister, Tiago, uh, uh, I would like to thank our Commissioner, Maria Gabriel, uh, and all of you here uh, with us today. Uh, Slovenia is looking forward to virtually hosting brilliant young minds at the first ever digital education hackathon in Slovenia. We are proud to announce that we will be organizing it in cooperation with the so-called IRCAI, 
that means International Research Center on Artificial Intelligence under the auspices of UNESCO. The DG EduHack main stage event that will take place on 8th of November this year will happen simultaneously with the high level presidency conference on uh, resetting education for the digital era, including the role that artificial intelligence uh, is supposed and needs to play in this framework. I dare to say that the topic of the DG EduHack could not be more appropriate for our green country. Finding education solutions for the United Nations Sustainable Goals. And myself personally, I'm very excited about this unique event. 24 hours of hacking and generating ideas aimed at providing education institutions in the EU and globally with the notion of artificial intelligence. And I promise you that we will make it dynamic and interesting. IRCAI will make sure to design an artificial intelligence challenge for the DG EduHack local teams with the main goal of demystifying artificial intelligence and making it accessible to young students. And of course, also not forgetting about the ethical, the human parts of the role that artificial intelligence needs to play for our societies and for the sake of our knowledge. So again, uh, welcome, Dobro Došli uh, to Slovenia. And I hopefully see you soon, uh, if not earlier than in November during our presidency. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Minister. We are very pleased also to work with you and um, with the Slovenian president on the organization of the hackathon. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to the final part and uh, it's a highlight. It's slightly tricky from a technical point of view, which is why I would kindly ask you to follow very carefully my instructions, please. Um, we will now take a picture of our high level speakers, Commissioner Gabriel, Minister um, Rodriguez and Minister Kustets together with each team. We are going to start by the team Provolosi. So I would ask the team Provolosi, Sebastiano, Simone, Sergio and uh, Lorenzo to switch on their camera. Everybody else switch off their camera. High level speakers, stay tuned with your camera on and please smile for around 10, 15 minutes. Well done to everyone, many thanks. It is now the turn of Save Your Dopamine. Please, team of Save Your Dopamine, Felix, Margareta, Luciano, switch on your camera, have good mood, smile, and stay on like this for around 10 seconds. I can't switch my, on my camera, sorry. Please allow me to do that. Of course. Thank you. Are you able to switch on your camera, Margareta? No, no. Then I propose that we are going to create a very nice collage with you as well on the team because you are Thank a you. part of the team. Many, many thanks to save your... Oh, there you are. Please, everyone, let's do a nice effort for also Margaretis with us. Many thanks. Perfect. Thank you. You see, we solve solutions. We have solutions for technological Can challenges. And uh, finally, the team believe. I kindly ask the team members to switch on their cameras. Please be with us with five uh, from Lima. It doesn't allow me to turn it on. Blocked. Colleagues from the technical team, perhaps uh, let's allow. Oh, yes. now it's fine. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Carla. Thank you. Media. Yes, I, I can Sorry, not. I'm not able to switch my camera. my camera. Too. We need also Sergio Farfan to be, uh, to be allowed. Okay. There we are. 
congratulations again many many thanks thank you many many thanks with this very delicate technical moment many thanks to everyone and it is my pleasure to um, close the awarding ceremony of the 2020 edition of the digital education hackathon big congratulations to the three winning teams and of course to all of you that have participated in this and we hope to get news on how you develop your products and solutions in the future many thanks to all the organizations who made this possible and to the to the presidencies thanks to my team in the european commission and i look forward to having you involved in the next edition of the digital education hackathon with this i would like to invite now the minister uh, of portugal for education mr rodriguez to take the floor and lead us into the uh, next item on the agenda which is the ministerial meeting many many thanks minister thank you Georgi, thank you, Georgi, dear Maria, dear Simona, dear winners. What a pleasure to have shared the beginning of this afternoon with you all, discussing uh, such bright ideas that shows us well how the best solution always arises from co-creation process involving different disciplines and multiple actors. The Digital Ag Education Hackathon, although only in its second edition has already proven to be a winning bet. Starting with the model of the initiative itself, that it clears cl clearly uh, ap appealing grassroots participation, uh, attracting uh, participants from uh, within and uh, outside the European Union, as it is revealed by the involvement of more than 2,700 participants from 33 different countries in the 2020 edition. And the success of this digital education hackathon becomes even clearer when we look to the quality and to the innovation of the different proposals that suggested solutions to pressing issues such as individual skills, learning spaces and pedagogies, learning experience and emergent technologies for education. I'm sure this year edition, which will be organized by the Slovenian presidency of the Council of the European Union and uh, Simona, I'm sure that it's going to be fantastic, will constitute a step forward in the achievement of the European Digital Education Hub goals. Simonia, Simona, I wish you all the best for the next edition, knowing for certain that it will be a great event. The theme of the Digital Education Hackathon, the future of education in the digital age, couldn't be more appropriate to bridge the morning discussion sessions that involved civil society in an uh, enlarged manner and counted with the participation of youngsters with the ministerial roundtable that will take place next. Public policies, especially the ones that deeply affect our younger generations and profoundly shape their future, are greatly enriched by the contribution of the everyday actors that implement and benefit from them. This is definitely the case of education, even more in a period of fast and constant change like the one we are right now going through. This said, we will now hear from the rapporteurs from this morning's sessions who will share with us the main ideas discussed and uh, the key conclusions that arose from those discussions. Thank you so much.